Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out, it's the Wizard X220S. You may remember my review of the original Wizard X220. A pretty great affordable little quad. It had a couple of problems, especially with the props. But this is the new version, the Wizard X220S. It's supposed to be upgraded, a little more powerful. Hopefully the construction's a little better. So we're gonna delve into um, this quad here and we're also going to be trying to mount either the Runcam 3 or the GoPro Session camera. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a full review, unboxing, inspection, setup, and full on flight test in the park, just to see what this thing is capable of, and as usual, probably some crashing, see if it holds up against some crashing and stuff. So sit back, relax, and let's get started with the Wizard X220S. Okay, so first off the box is uh, just a white box, pretty plain Jane. It gives us one view from the front and one view from the top, it looks like. But without further ado, we want to start unboxing it because there's not much to look at on the box. We need to get to the quad. So instruction manual comes out right in the beginning here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And it looks like a two-tiered package of foam. I wanna make sure I have this tilted up in the right direction. There we go, so a box jam-packed full of a whole bunch of propell propellers, and I'm hoping they maybe improved these propellers from the regular X220, because the regular X220, if you remember, the propellers would blow up on 4S. Not enough, I don't know if they were balanced correctly or constructed correctly or what, but um, hopefully these ones are better. Anyway, right off the top, we have the FlySky controller. This is what's coming into the package since it is a ready to fly. Not seeing any batteries in, the, in there, but you know, standard switches, we should have arming and we should have our modes of flight, three modes of flight. So we'll check that out in just a sec, but all the same basic controls that a normal quad would have. You got your throttle, your yaw, your pitch, and your roll. And these these radios are pretty awesome. You can go in and you can adjust a lot of per parameters for how uh, cheap they are. So it should work fairly well. Okay, and getting to everything else in the box before we pull out the quad. Looks like we have a Pagoda antenna this time. Cool. So Pagodas are pretty good antennas. They've got um, some great coverage four propeller nuts. It looks like two are clockwise and two are counterclockwise. What's on this side? We have two wrenches. One is gonna be, actually they're both the same, just two of them, for propeller nuts and our VTX antenna. And we have four foam feet with double-sided sticky tape. And they are actually putting um, LiPo in the box. 4S LiPo here, this is a 1500 milliamp hour, so we should get some decent flight time. And it's a 75C if we can focus here, and that is a 4S battery, cool. So they're giving us some great performance right out of the box with a decent battery. And what's up here, we got a bag of zip ties, so it looks like around close to 10 zip ties there for repairing or doing whatever we want to do with our zip ties and a whole nother set of screws so interesting so a bunch of screws in the bag for backup and here's the charger and the wall plug so these are the last two things in the box you just plug in the wall plug right here and it is a 4s single balance connector and that's how you're going to charge uh, the 4s battery they give you you got red light green light for charging and charged. And this is a US plug. I'm sure they're gonna have it for different parts of the world. Anyways, uh, here it is. Let's pull it on out. Wow, okay, wow. It's really pretty, isn't it? Wow. So let's go through some upgrades from the initial wizard. I'm seeing a little bit prettier standoffs. We got these really dark purple standoffs here um, i don't remember there being wire management like this on the regular x220 so they upgraded that i believe these are a little bit beefier motors too these are 23 uh, 100 kv motors Ishin motors 2206 and there's our camera it's just a purple camera it's, looks like it's fairly generic i'm not sure what the brand is going to be on that probably just one of the Ishin. Ishin brands, two Velcro straps on the top for our battery here. And it does in fact look like there is a nice sticky 
silicone pad. You see that there? So that when you put your battery on top, it's not going to slide around. So you really don't need to put any Velcro or, any, or anything on here if you didn't want to. Um, you know, it's already got this nice grippy sticky pad. Everything else looks pretty similar to the standard wizard. It's got the same kind of frame here. Oh, what I'm seeing that's a little bit different is check that out. There's a micro SD card slot. So apparently we can record. It's got an onboard DVR, I believe. So we can record um, just straight to the drone, drone if we want to. But oh no, look what I'm seeing. Ah, look at this. This thing is loose in here. Look at that standoff. So this screw is completely loose. So again with this one, before you even take it out and attempt to fly it, go through all these screws and make sure you Loctite them, pull them all out, put them back in with Loctite and crank them down. Um, in the first X220 I was, I was uh, reviewing, the propellers on 4S just completely, three of them, I think two or three of them just completely disintegrated when I was hammering it on 4S, fell out of the sky when it hit the ground the frame, this midsection here, actually popped out. It didn't break, it just popped out because these screws were so incredibly loose and they even got looser from the vibration. So, not really good news here. They're not really QCing this very well. And you can see here that we've got loose screws. So make sure you crank those down. That's probably why it's so cheap is because they're spending less time in the manufacturing and saving some money. So they're leaving it up to you to make sure the quality checks are done as far as screw tightening at least. Here's a massive, what is this, a 10 LED strip here. Wow, five on each side. We've got a beeper here, so it should give us a nice loud beep when it's low on power. One single antenna, not seeing another one in here, just one single RX antenna. It's in a decent place as long as the propellers aren't hitting it. That should be fine there. And then we have our FPV antenna here FPV port that we're gonna have to put our antenna on right away. So if you know anything about FPV drones and video transmitters, always put this thing on right away as soon as you get it out of the box, just to be safe in case you power it up and you forget to put it on. You don't wanna fry out that video transmitter. Anyway, same type of uh, XT60 plug and this little grommeted mount here for the wiring. And right on top here, it looks like we're going to be able to put a Runcam 3 or Session camera. It looks like the camera is pre-tilt at about 35. And it does have this little scale here, degree scale. So from zero all the way to 90. So it kind of will help you tilt your camera if you need to. Let's check out the sides and see what's going on. So I don't see a port on this side. I did see a rubber port here and I think that is gonna be the port you're gonna plug in for your flight controller. If we pop this out, yeah, that is a little micro uh, USB port which we're gonna plug into Betaflight. And uh, they do just give you this little tab that's kind of shaped like the port which you can push in when not in use. I just want to flip it over to the bottom and it looks pretty much exact, I want to say exactly the same as the X220. It's got the same X pattern, pretty much a perfect X with a little bit wider from left to right than front to back. Front to back is a little shorter and it's a little wider this way. Uh, and so it's gonna give you a little more stability side to side. The bottom is a nice setup. I like how they did this. They're all individual arms. So if you break one, you can just pop it off and replace one if you really need to. I do like how they have these little plastic motor guards here on the ends. And there's actually LED lights also secured to the bottom as well. Anyway, that's basically the drone, nothing more to it. I think what I might do is you can see how these are kind of puffing up a little high. Just to prevent if a prop bends and kind of goes down and hits this, I might just zip tie these since they give us 10 zip ties about in the package. I might just put one single zip tie across here just to make sure these are secured to the arms. Anyway guys, that is the Wizard X220S, just a close up look at it. I don't think in this one I'm gonna go through all the setup in Betaflight. There's a lot of videos about Betaflight and how to set up quads in general. So I'm gonna skip that part in this video just to make it a little quicker and so we can get out to the park and start flying. Um, I will mention, you know, if I found any problems or what was going on with the tuning or if there was any issues uh, when we fly. But uh, let me charge everything up guys and let's go fly this thing in the park. Okay guys, we're at the park, beautiful day. We're only getting about maybe at the most five mile per hour winds. Mainly coming from this direction, it's kind of variable. 
So we should have a really good flight today. We're gonna test out this Wizard 220S and see how it does. Um, one thing to note, it seemed like they had kind of a um, little bit weird uh, modes here. They were only configured, they're only configured to the actual knobs. So kind of weird the way they have it. I tried to configure the switches, but um, unfortunately none of the switches seem to be um, actually configurable in the controller, so I couldn't even put it to a switch. So a little bit weird, but I think I have it on the right knob. We're gonna see how that all works out. Anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do two flights. We're gonna do a line of sight where I'm gonna just kind of fly it with my, without the FPV goggles on, see how it performs with this hat cam so you guys can see the performance. And then I'm gonna slip on another battery. We're gonna use one of these R-Line um, 2.0 Tattoo 100C batteries, 1300. So these are supposed to be pretty powerful. So I'm gonna have one of these for the line of sight and then I'm gonna use one for the FPV. And then for the FPV, we're actually using the new SkyZone V Plus uh, goggles. Just got these in and these actually have the capability to do 3D if you wanted to. They give you a 3D video transmitter here. You can put on your quad and also this 3D FPV camera. I'm not gonna be using this today, maybe in a future review. I'll be checking that out, but um, pretty cool. These have a scanner in them too, so these may replace my Amways, I'm not sure. They also have a camera on the front, so you don't have to take them off and you can switch cameras. The one thing I didn't see on these is there's no fan, so hopefully they don't fog up. We'll be kind of reviewing these as we fly this uh, Wizard today. And so for the Wizard, I'm also gonna be using the Runcam 3. This one is, you know, they kind of advertise it flying with the Runcam 3 because it's a cheaper option to the GoPro Hero Session. So I'm gonna, after the line of sight, I'm gonna slap this uh, Runcam 3 on there and then we'll do the FPV. I'll be recording the FPV goggles. I'll be recording this Runcam also and giving you some live commentary through the flight. So anyway, let's get started with our line of sight flight first. Okay, cool, so I got the battery in. So this thing's great because they give you that really sticky rubber um, tab here that's actually glued to the quad itself. So this battery is really not gonna go anywhere as long as you tighten it down nice and tight. So of course the camera's off for this flight. I'm hoping that these Velcro straps aren't gonna get hit. They're super close for this camera mount. I'm just gonna leave it on for the line of sight. We'll see how it performs. See if it nicks or hits these before our FPV flight. Anyway, controller on first, guys, so powering up. Powering up the quad here. Okay. Let that thing go through its boot up process and we are ready to go. So the left knob I have configured for all the way left is unarmed. You see how I can't do anything with it. And then I have it for the middle. You hear how it's beeping? So that's the lost beeper alarm. And then I have it all the way to the right is actually armed and I just saw the lights on the back turn blue. So now it's armed and I want this knob all the way to the left, it should be my stabilize mode. So you can see that the propellers are not spinning uh, when I'm off the throttle. So these will cut off unless you configure it to stay on. So looking good, you can see that this one has blinkers, kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure if I, for, I forget if I configured this in beta flight or if it was already stocked, but anyway, it's configurable. I'm rolling left and the left blinker's coming on, rolling right, right blinker, pushing forward and the top lights are going on, pushing back and the rear lights are flashing yellow. So it looks pretty good. So let's do a little bit of performance test now that we have a fresh battery first off. And you can see that it is uh, self-leveling. When I let off the stick, it's self-leveling. Uh, let's see if I'm right in the way I configured this on my right uh, roller. If I turn it all the way to the right, yeah, so that's air or acro mode. I forget which one I configured it out. I think it was air mode. I guess we'll find out if I land it, if it still uh, spins the propellers. Yeah, so that's actually air mode. You see how it's still spinning the propellers? Cool, so if I wanna get out of that, I just turn my knob all the way to the left. Still armed, but this is uh, stabilized mode. All right, cool, let's do a punch test, guys. So we still got fresh battery. From a hover to full throttle up, right now. <laughs> so this tattoo, man, batteries are super high performance. 
Let's do a full throttle forward and pitch forward. First off, let's see what our pitch maximums are. So full pitch forward. So it's looking like it's about maybe, uh, I wanna say 35 degrees. So kind of perfect for the camera, 35, 40 degrees. And same with the, uh, the roll, 35, 40 degrees until it stops you in self-leveling mode, of course. Uh, air mode is you're gonna have full acro control. Okay, so full stick forward and full throttle right now. Woo! That is fast, guys. Coming back, I'm seeing that red light flash like crazy. Yeah, actually, they're flashing really fast now. If you do full stick back, oh, interesting, okay. This should have a beeper on it, so when it starts beeping, we'll be doing our, um, we'll, start, we'll start landing it anyway. Okay, so our yaw, let's see what the speed of the yaw is. I'm getting some wind coming from this direction, so that's why it's, you see how it's going back on its own? It's just blowing with the wind. This doesn't have any GPS lock, of course. Okay, so yaw control, let's see the speed. So yaw stick all the way right. That's a reasonable yaw. Great beginner, you know, yaw speed. Not too fast, not too slow. I think it's just right for like an intermediate flyer. Let's do another punch test. That was just so crazy, wasn't it? Full throttle up, right. Now. <laughs> uh oh. Ooh. So <laughs> did you see that? That, for some reason, it lost its orientation up there in the sky and it would not um, self level. So maybe a prop or something. Let's check it out. Again, I can disarm it with this knob all the way to the left. If I need to turn on the beeper, push my knob to the middle and you can hear it beeping. Okay, we found it and here we are. So what happened there, man? That was crazy, wasn't it? That thing fell, I was trying to save it, like I was, I don't know, I was trying to throttle it up and punch it and it just kept spinning out of control. So be very careful with that. Not sure what happened there. Looks like I bent a couple of props here. So let me replace these guys. Looks like this prop in the front bent. I'm not sure what bent from just flying and what bent from the crash probably mostly from the crash. But the um, the original version of the wi the Wizard guys, I should mention, had issues with its propellers being brittle and they would just break off in um, normal high-speed flight. So I might wanna put some different propellers on this. I'm gonna try it one more time with the stock propellers they give you since they give you so many. But check this out, no damage. You can see where it hit the grass. There's some scratching on the motor guards. That flew from pretty darn high. That was, gosh, around 75 feet tumbling and nothing at all is wrong with it. Antenna's still good. Front's still good, all the arms are fine. So it might, may have lessened it a little bit since it was kind of fumbling down and I was giving it throttle. Anyway, let me put some new propellers on and try this again. Okay guys, so that was pretty darn weird. So I've got um, two new props on, just the counterclockwise props were the only ones that were really bent. These ones have some slight little stress marks, but really nothing, they're not bent at all. So I'm just gonna kind of leave them on. So I'm hoping it's just the props and not something wrong with the flight control or something. Well, let's just give it a go again with the regular props and then we'll try some different props if that doesn't solve our problem. Okay, so let's try this again. Arming. Yeah, it seems fine. I think it must have been a prop. Let's try that punch again. See if it falls out of the sky. Oh. Seems okay. I don't know what that was. Anyway, it survived. Two bend props on that huge fall. Let me switch into acro. So dial all the way to the right. And let's try a couple of flips and stuff. See how fast it flips before we slap on the goggles. Nice. 
So not super quick, but you know, manageable. Yeah, that's actually a good speed for learning FPV. You can see how I'm just punching it and pushing the right stick all the way forward till it levels out. So cool, seems to be doing pretty good. Seems like the roll and the um, pitch are both the same speed. There's two, there's a double front flip. Let's see a double roll here. One, two, nice. One, two, three. Woo! It's always a little more tough for me to fly <laughs> acro line of sight. Let's try just a couple of throttle on kind of rolls, arch rolls, and then we'll pop on the goggles. Yeah. Kind of a throttle on forward flip. Not hearing any beeping yet. That's good. Even when I punch it, still no beeping. That's great. All right, well, it's definitely flying really nice. I'm gonna switch back into stabilize. Right roller all the way to the left. Seems like it's leveled a little weird. It's uh, pulling back a little too much. So something I may have done wrong. I think what happened was when I was trying to first start it, I think there's a way you can level it with the sticks by bringing both sticks down and in or down and out. And I think I accidentally set it for level on that launch pad. And the launch pad was actually a little bit unlevel to the back. So that's why it thinks its level is a little to the back. So I shouldn't have done that, that's my bad. But I can always re-level it at home on a perfectly level surface. Or if you bring a level with you, you can always do that. So I wanna fly this until the battery is beeping and, oh gosh, it's getting really weak. Look at this, oh my goodness. I hope I didn't ruin my battery. No beeper. No level, no low voltage beeper. I better unplug this really quick. That's a bummer, man. Okay, I don't know what was up with that, but it got really sluggish like it was out of power. So be careful with that. I could have sworn this thing was supposed to have a, a low level battery beeper. Maybe I messed with some of the settings and shut it off by accident. Anyway guys, let me know, comment in the um, description below in the comments actually and let me know if yours uh beeps on low level or if possibly i did something and accidentally turned that off that could be kind of risky might ruin your batteries if it doesn't have a low level beeper but the hopefully the fpv does have a um a voltage so i'll be able to see that in the goggles so let me slap on these sky zones these new ones i got the v plus and see how they do and i'll be recording everything for you so you can see how it does with the goggles on okay guys and before i put the goggles on i just want to go through one thing really quick this other propeller i replaced two already this one seems like it might be a little bent from the vibration and i just kind of wanted to show you guys how to do these propellers the ones it comes with are really tight to get on if you try to push them on directly you might break something or you might get frustrated and give up. So what I would do is use the threading as a starter. You see how I'm unscrewing it? Of course, the counterclockwise will be the opposite way. But with these purple propellers they give you, you have to kind of use the threads to get them on. And I'll show you that right now. Let me grab a new one here. Of course, I want to grab the right direction. That looks right. You want the top edge to be facing into the front or the back, depending on which uh, motor it is. So you see this is a regular clockwise motor with a silver cap across the other clockwise. If I just try to push these on, these will not go on. So you're gonna have to screw these on like this. And then when you reach the bottom, just give it another twist and it'll kind of loosen it up a little bit and you, you'll know that you're all the way on the motor. And then you can put your, your motor nut on. So just a little bit of a tidbit with this because at first I almost gave up when I first got this and I was trying to push the propellers on. I was really frustrated. So make sure you twist them on with the thread. Okay, let's start up the um, Run Cam 3 here. It just slides into the side of the mount, no problem. 
And I am going to be recording this in uh, 1080, 30 frames per second only. Let's sit down here and get these Sky Zone goggles on. And I'm thinking, I'm hoping the interface on the in the goggles also records because I want to show you the scan function if it does. I'm not sure if it will, but let's put these on and give it a try. Okay, so it looks like when I'm recording, I can't get into the search menu, but there is a search menu. Basically, you just press and hold that top big button, the silver button on the top of the goggles, and press it again, and it will actually search through all the channels and give you the strongest channel. So it does have a search function on these. I am noticing I have these on my face now, and they're not super comfortable with the stock band they give. They do give you some other foam and another three band strap. And I'm already seeing maybe a slight bit of fog in these just because it's a really calm day. But I should take off as soon as possible. Unfortunately, these have no uh, fan in them. So anyway, I'm holding the uh, right dial, left dial, all the way to the right. You see how it said armed? And unfortunately, I have no voltage or anything. So we'll see that how this thing does. I'm going to start off in stabilize mode. You can see on the bottom middle of the screen, we have stabilize. We're going to launch here and I'm going to switch right away into um, air mode. So you get a little bit of height, switch all the way into air. I think you saw in the, the middle is actually acro, so you have air and acro mode on this thing. So I'm just going to stay in air mode for now, do some flying around, see how it is. It is feeling really nice and smooth. You can see how the video is pretty good. A little bit of break up there. Whoa, when I went behind that tree. And that's going to happen with pretty much, you know, any kind of quad you have. So I'm just going to kind of cruise around nice and easy and then we'll try to hit some of these goal posts. Just want to get a feel for it first. But it is feeling really good. You know. Just going to whip it around. I don't want to go behind this tree much because there's people over there. Yikes, I don't want to go over those people either. So I'm going to stay in the park here and just kind of fly around me and do some uh, goal posts flying and stuff. Let's see if we can thread the needle here. There we go. Whip it back around. Um, I thought the video might be a little better. It's a little bit scratchy. Again, I'll have that run cam up so you guys can see how that's looking. Let's just try to whip it around here. Come through. Flip it back around, go under this goal post again. Woo! A little bit rusty. I haven't flown FPV for a while. I've been concentrating on some of the more of the GPS quads and stuff, but I'm doing well enough. You know. There is some shadows here. And let's try to get back under this goal post. There we go. Yeah, wow, this is doing really good, guys. It's feeling nice. I was behind my head there, you could see how the video was kind of scratchy. And that's how it is with, um, gosh, those dogs are just going off again. Sorry about that. It's handling really smooth, though. Um, I'm gonna go to maybe four minutes. You see how I got five minutes on the right there? That's kind of the only time I can kind of judge right now. Whoa, <laughs> that might have been the crash test right there. Woo! Nice. Back up, pulling out. Woo! It's flying good though, guys. I'm going to go to four minutes and then bring it close because there's no beeper on this, unfortunately. I don't know what happened. I was going to try that gold post, but there's people over there. I don't want to crash right into them. Whoa, that was just about a crash. <laughs> Whoa, getting kind of scratchy. Okay, I'm gonna kind of start kind of wrapping it up, but this thing is feeling really nice and smooth. Again, I'm not a pro flyer, but it's doing really well. So for, you know, somebody's first quad, yeah, getting really sluggish, coming back in. I'm going to land it. Okay. Oh, disarm. See how the props are still spinning? 
So when you're air, when you're in air mode, you got to disarm real quick if you land in air mode, or else they'll keep spinning and going crazy. So let me get this, and that was a great flight. Really impressed with this one. Aside from a couple of those first line of sight issues, let's check it out. Let's get it and do a pros and cons. Okay, guys. So that was a great flight. Of course, to turn off the run cam three, um, just you know, hold, press it once to stop recording, and then press and hold the top button and that turns the whole camera off. And the sky zones too, I'm not sure if they if they do power off save, so make sure you stop your recording on these before you unplug the power. I just, the power is right there where you plug in. But pretty good goggles. I'm just a little bit worried about having no fan. They actually did not fog up on me, and usually a pair of goggles like this will fog up in this hot, this is, I'm in Hawaii right now, and these um, conditions are pretty humid here and hot. It's maybe about 85 degrees and fairly humid today and i thought they were going to fog up but no fogging so that's good but let's talk about the wizard uh, 220s guys a really good introduction quad you can see how strong it was for the line of sight i was way up there i must have been like 75 to 100 feet and i just punched it up remember that and it started to go fruit like flutter down and i was trying to give it punch it throttle to maybe level it out again i think one of the propellers uh, integrity was it kind of bent or something because these propellers are known to not be so good that uh, Ishin gives with these quads the regular the standard wizard I don't know if you guys saw my review of that one but <laughs> two of their propellers when I put 4s in it just disintegrated in air at full throttle so um, this one didn't do that they did pretty good I was full throttle full throttling it a couple times and they seemed to hold out but um, yeah, that one punch out, I'm really not sure what that, what that was, but it didn't seem to do it again. The one thing I didn't test on this is you see there's an SD card in there. I didn't even touch base on that. So supposedly there's a DVR in here that you can uh, possibly record this with, but normally people have FPV goggles that use this and it's always good to have a DVR on your goggles. So if you lose your quad or something, you can actually check the recording on your goggles because if it's recording on here and this is lost you're not going to know where that is until you pull out the sd card so it's good to have a set of goggles and these ones did pretty well these may be replacing my um, amways i'm not too sure yet i'm gonna do a couple more reviews with these and see see how they do if they fog up at all that's going to be the deciding factor to me because there is apparently no fan on these so i'll have to do it a little bit more with those but as you can see guys great strength great speed very smooth tune what they gave it in air mode i was flying in air mode mainly uh exclusively in my fpv flight just wasn't stabilized just to launch and i immediately switched into air you can see how i had set this thing up i kind of forgot how i had set it up because it was a few days ago when I did my unboxing part. But you can see how I actually um, have this knob into three modes. So this is stabilized here, and you can do all this in beta flight. And then in the middle, you can see it change on the screen really quick before I went to air mode. It was going to acro. Anyway, that's the way you do it. None of these other switches will work, so that's a con on this one. Just these two knobs are working. Even if you configure them in the menu, I couldn't find out a way how to get these switches working. So that's the only con on this controller. The range was great for this park, all the way across the park. You know, on the other side of that tree is at least 100 yards I was going, so no hiccups there. And I'll have had the camera up, the Runcam 3. This one is kind of advertised with this cheap Runcam 3 because it is kind of a budget system here. Of course, this battery is not a budget battery. This is the Tattoo R-Line. I just wanted to test these because I got a few of them. And by the way, if you guys are interested in any of this, any of this stuff, I will have the links uh, down in the description below the video. So check out those links to see what the pricing is and more of the specs on this. It had plenty of power, even with this battery and the camera on. Of course, not as much punch as if you don't aren't using a camera that adds a few, you know, ounces of weight. So. And just be careful with the velcro strap here it's really close to the propellers i've only got like a couple millimeters and you can see how this one actually hit that a couple times um, probably because these motors are actually soft mounted so there are rubber grommets or rubber pads underneath these motors to try to mi mitigate vibration what you really want to do with this one is you want to tighten all the screws make sure when you first get it make sure all the screws are tight and loctited before you even fly it. 
um, because with the first version, the standard Wizard 220, I had problems with screws falling out and all kinds of stuff. So I learned my lesson on that one. And you're, you know, that's that's kind of how it is. You save some money, and then they kind of cut corners on QCing. So you kind of have to do kind of some of the QCing yourself. Whenever you see something this cheap and this good, there's usually a reason. And so maybe that's why they don't really spend a lot of time QCing and making sure all the screws are tight. So make sure you do that. FPV was great. As you can see, uh, no voltage. So a little bit of a con there. Would have liked to see the voltage. I'm not sure if it's something I didn't configure right in beta flight, but I just left that stuff alone. All I did is configure my modes. So, and the beeper, gosh, that was a big con to me too. There was no, since there was no voltage, it didn't know what the voltage was and this beeper wasn't working. So whether that's how it was out of the factory or something I just didn't turn on in beta flight, I would like to see that capability just out of the box because this is more geared towards beginner FPV flyers that want something cheap and to see if they're going to want to even go into this size of FPV after they've been training on something a little bit smaller. So other than those couple of, you know, couple of shortcomings, pretty darn good, man. It was, it's way better than the first one. Uh, the way they tuned it is a lot smoother. It feels like it's more controllable and easier and it definitely has more power and it's definitely stronger. Um, as you can see, man, this thing just held up to that crazy drop out of the sky. A couple of bent props. That's all that happened to this one. But I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, full review of the Isheen Wizard X220S. Anyway guys, links in the description. Check this stuff out if you're interested and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.